Hey guys, it's Ro. Welcome to another Nerdy Nummies. Today, I have a very special guest. It's Timbo! What's going on? He is amazing. If you guys are not familiar with Timbo, you may recognize him from many places, but one of which is my new show, Baketopia, that is out now on HBO Max. Timbo's a part of the Kate Council, so if you're not familiar, that's one of the judges because he is a food expert. I'm going to be putting all of his links down below, so go check him out, show him some love, subscribe, follow, heart. What else can we do on social media? Everything, everything you can do. I would say I'm good at decorating, but I'm not this good. You can make hyper-realistic cakes, you make super detailed cakes, and that's why he's an expert on the show. So anyways, if you haven't checked out our show yet, go check it out now. It's on HBO yes. Max. We have 12 episodes there. And today, what are we making today, Timbo? So in honor of the new Godzilla vs. Kong movie coming out, we are going to make a Godzilla cake because we are Team Godzilla all the way. Yeah. That is, that is who we're rooting for. Yeah, That's who yeah, going yeah. We won't do any spoilers here, but I'm really excited. And that movie is now out. You may have already seen it, but it's out in theaters and on HBO Max, which is how, which is how I'm watching it. It's really perfect because you can go watch Godzilla vs. Kong and then go watch Baketopia. That's like a lot. And then you can <laughs> come have some fun with us. <laughs> I've never made a hyper realistic cake. So I'll help you with the recipe because you don't like to Bake, right? Take this part completely away from me. You are <laughs> totally in charge of the recipe and the baking. This is teamwork. All right, you guys, let's, let's get, get started. started. So the recipe that we're gonna be making today is a lime cake. You guys know why it's a lime cake? I have no clue. It's because Godzilla in many different versions eats radiation. So I wanted it to look a little, you know, like green, but on the natural side, natural radiation. See, I'll keep that in mind for the design aspect too, but I won't spoil anything yet. Ooh, okay, I'm so excited. Okay, so Timbo, I put the big mixing bowl in front of you. Okay, I'm gonna put it. you to work, but I'm gonna help you out. We're gonna start with the dry ingredients. So we're gonna mix together the flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Salty, salty. Then you're just gonna whisk together until well combined. Timbo, what kind of cakes do you usually make? So normally I just use a box cake. Like mm -hmm. I just doctor them up so they don't taste like box cakes, but it's just, it's way easier for me. It's faster and like I can hurry up and get to the decorating part, you know? The fun part. Oh, I'm fascinated by this doctoring too. You put like chocolate chips in there. I love my cake's dents for carving. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I use more eggs if I want the cake to carve a little better. That's a great tip. I'm gonna call that a Timbo tip. <laughs> if Timbo you wanna tip. doctor your box cakes and make them better for carving, you can add like another egg or you can add more flour to the cake mix. Cause lighter cakes, they just crumble on me and fall apart when I was carving them. Once you got your dry ingredients mixed together, we are going to mix together our wet ingredients. Again, in a big bowl, we're going to be adding in, I'm going to hand these to you, oil, whole milk. I'm going to be putting all of the ingredients and their measurements in the description down below. So if you guys want to recreate this recipe and do this at home, you can. This recipe is for three eight inch round cakes, which we're going to be using. Uh -huh. And we might make a second batch for the top part of our cake. Yep. Let's crack some eggs. Now this is going to get messy. Now, now remember, you said you were going to teach me how to do the one-handed crack. I've never done that before, yes. so This is no. going to be great. <laughs> crack, and then the top two fingers, pointer finger and the thumb, twist this way, whereas your middle finger twists the other way. Okay. So it's almost like wringing out a towel. We're definitely having <laughs> shells in these. Godzilla probably would eat eggshells. Okay. okay, so it's totally fine. Crack, and then twist. Crack. Can I see? Yeah, yeah, is it doing it? I think you did it. Okay, one more time. You're such a pro, I bet okay. it'll just come to you. You'll just, you'll just be like, oh yeah. No shells, I'm happy with it. Woo! <laughs> oh, we do have a shell, okay, don't <gasps> look. Uh oh, uh oh, no, 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 it didn't happen, it didn't happen, it didn't happen, I'll get it out, I'll get it out. Ooh, now time to add the lime. Take a smell, do you like lime? I love lime. It's so fresh. It makes me want to make a mojito right now. All right, so we're just going to add the zest and okay. the fresh lime juice. Okay, now we're going to cream this together for about two minutes on a medium speed. Okay, have you creamed something before? Probably. I haven't used a hand mixer ever in my life. What? I went straight from whisk to stand mixer. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. Timbo said he's never used a hand mixer before in his life. I'm gonna faint. <laughs> I can't believe this. 
Oh my gosh, so many firsts today. This is so exciting. Yeah, just like that, that's perfect. Woo! Timbo, we've got okay. our wet ingredients, we've got mm -hmm. our dry ingredients, and now they're gonna come together. Would you help me pour half the dry into the wet, get it well incorporated until you don't see any more dry mixture, and then let's add that other half. Final step, Timbo, do you wanna do the honors? Okay. How about we'll split it? One drop, just a little okay. bit of food coloring, some mint green color, kinda like what I'm wearing, and you're just gonna put a couple drops in there. Look at that, a little bit goes such a long way. This is such a bright, beautiful color. Okay, we're ready. Our batter is now ready. I can smell this delicious lime cake. I cannot wait for it to bake, and we've got three cake pans. Using an eyeballing method, just divide your batter evenly between the three pans. And again, we're gonna be making a second batch to make some more cakes. I'm gonna guess what a third is. That's a third? No? Uh, I don't think, maybe a little no, more. No, my math's off. I'm <laughs> feeling like that's a third. This is, this is so all bad. math right here. That's a third. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is a third. Doesn't that look radioactive? <laughs> all right, now we're gonna pop these cakes in the oven. You're gonna heat your oven to 325 degrees and bake for about 20 to 26 minutes. Once your cakes have baked, give them plenty of time to cool, and then we are going to assemble these cakes. And look at these cool mitts. <laughs> <laughs> Timbo's so sweet. After we wrap filming the show, he made these custom mitts for me and Donald, and they're so funny. <laughs> and we ended up making four eight-inch rounds and three six-inch rounds. All right, now let's assemble. Timbo, okay. walk us through. How do you do? Okay, we're just gonna start stacking like crazy. You know, like that's just how you have to go about this. You don't have to be neat at all because everything is being carved anyway. So Love it. our motto for today is as messy as possible. Yes. I've leveled all the cakes to be one inch tall so that they're all uniform in size. A little dollop, place it right in the middle. This is so cool. The frosting is acting like glue. Is that lined up? Doesn't have to be, remember? Oh, We're yeah. not working that way today, We don't bro. care. We don't care. <laughs> it doesn't need to look good. That looks great. So we know we're going to use the six inch cakes next. Carve first, angle his back a little more. Always leave these to the side because we might need them later. You know, you might need them later. Mmm! <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh, here, I'll, I'll help you. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna help Timbo. I'm helping. <laughs> so I cut his back at an angle and then I'm mm -hmm. kind of building his throat. We gotta add some structural support. So whenever you're making a cake that has multiple tiers or it's getting a little taller, I would suggest giving it support. So you can use dowels. They make them in all different shapes and sizes. These are basically like big boba straws. Now I'm only using three because the cake won't be that big and um, it'll also have like a lot of ganache dollop there. All right, another dollop on top another cake plate, and then we're gonna stack the smaller cakes on top of that. Oh my gosh, look at all these layers of cake. We're just gonna add on to mm -hmm. the throw a little more, take some buttercream, so we're gonna start using some of our this. scraps here. You don't have to overthink the carbon. Then that makes me feel better, because okay. if I ever cut off too much, I don't need to worry anymore. I just can, I can just stick it back on. Body is done. We're using Rice Krispie Treats for the very top, but they mm -hmm. can get very heavy as well, especially with like all of that fondant and ganache, so. Mm -hmm. We want a dollar cake again. The cake is all assembled now and carved. We're gonna pop it in the freezer while we work on some more decorations. So while the cakes are chilling, Timbo, what are we doing next? As weird as it sounds, we're going to make the skull of Godzilla. We're gonna start from the bottom up. So I'm just gonna use this board. And you're just cutting it out. So just like cakes, we're gonna use these in layers. I'm trying not to cut too much because they're already very airy and you don't want too much air in your uh, Rice Krispie Treats when you're making the skull. Shape them on the surface instead of carving. And then you wanna go smaller as you go up. I just keep getting smaller and smaller. I wonder how big Godzilla's brain is. I feel like his head is like the smallest part of his body. <laughs> Okay. Whoa, look at that. So now that we've gotten rid of most of the air, we're gonna do some carving. Got it. Carve some down. And look now. at that. So this is about the shape that we want. Just gonna use our surface to kind of smooth it a bit more. And now because my favorite part about cakes like this, is the tongue and teeth and a little slobber. So we're gonna open up his mouth. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Okay, so you're just cutting the top. We're making the mouth. Open it up, so that for now. One of our spatulas. I just wanna make a little hole in the mouth so we can throw some lights down there. <gasps> Is this for a laser beam? Yes. Oh! <laughs> so we took the cake out of the freezer again. What's next? Okay, so now we're just going to assemble 
the cake and then we're going to kind of use our ganache as a spackle to hold it all together. And we're gonna use these for the side of the cake. Oh, like his shoulder. Right, so let's get some ganache made and then we can place it on there. This ganache looks amazing. Yeah. I'm gonna put the recipe down below that Timbo used, so if you wanna make it at home, you can. Ganache is very easy. Very easy, and I have it cooled just a bit because I really like to use my ganache kind of like a peanut butter consistency. You also wanna make sure you chill your cake first so that way it doesn't kind of like run down the cake. You just wanna add a little to the top of the cake first so that the head doesn't go anywhere. Now, normally, <gasps> I would use like a long wooden dowel or something like that straight through the cake. But with ganache, this thing isn't going anywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the head area. I don't think I've covered the whole cake in ganache before. This is a technique that we've never done. So far, I'm loving it. I think it's so smart. And it's really setting everything together. So now that we have him cooled and chilled, the chocolate is pretty hard. You wanna be able to knock on it. We're just gonna create some muscles. I am gonna use my reference photos for this part. This is the Godzilla that we're making. So I'm gonna do is just take a little ball of fondant, just roll that in my palm and then sharpen it just a bit. Here, I'm gonna add to the lip and give him a jaw. I want this jaw to kind of come through once we cover it. So Timbo's adding layers of fondant. These are the details that are gonna be underneath to just add more realistic structure. A little bit of milk, and this was really cool. I asked Timbo why we're using milk, because usually when I'm attaching fondant to dried fondant, I use a little bit of water. Uh -huh. So why are we using milk, Timbo? <laughs> we're using the milk because it attaches to the um, chocolate better because of the fat and oils that are in chocolate the milk just works a lot better. Brought to you by hashtag Timbo Tips. <laughs> Do I put this on his neck? Yep. I'm so scared, I'm scared. The, is this tall enough? You, you can't mess it up. I'm, That's perfect. Okay. And then you're just kind of moldy, so you just pinch up the sides. This is so fun. I'll have you add on your little shoulder blades. Attaching the shoulder. This cake is looking more and more realistic. It looks incredible. And when I heard we were doing this, I got you a Godzilla-sized piece of fondant. Okay, so while I rolled this out, we just need him like completely covered in milk. <gasps> okay, I'm on it. Oh my gosh, it's happening, it's happening. Should I move it towards us? Should I move it towards us? Should I move it? Uh, Should yeah, I... that's good. Yep. This way? Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 what can I do? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm terrified. Hold it? Yep, just start placing it on there. Okay, it's on. How are you so calm when you do this? <laughs> every time I put fondant over a cake and I'm overlaying it, I have a mini heart attack every time. All right, cutting off the excess fondant. Now, if we wanted a wrinkly neck, we really got it. I wonder how old Godzilla is. He's over 252 million years old. What? <laughs> I mean, wow, impressive. This is looking better. We're just gonna texture this fondant first. That's cool. This is a really cool technique. So just take a little bit of a Aluminum foil, crunchy, 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 and then flatten it out again and roll it on top of the fondant and it's gonna give it that really cool crinkly skin texture. We'll use these as kind of like his 3D scales. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, okay, so I should start cutting those out? Yep. What are you up to over here? I'm gonna add some more detail and texture to his actual skin. Ooh, what are you gonna be doing? Are you using a fondant tool? This is my favorite tool ever, like the best cake tool ever invented. So I just finished cutting out all of these scales over here, and I notice you've done a lot of work on the design. This looks uh, amazing. And I, got, I see you got some straws. So what yes. are these for? So now we're gonna make some scales on the actual skin. <gasps> so this is a technique that I always say, it's like fun until it's not fun anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very time consuming, but it's worth it. Bending and shaping my bubble tea straws. Oh, the ends of them, so they're not like a perfect circle, uh -huh. so they're kind of like, just the little warps. And so I'm just gonna kind of push in mm -hmm. and kind of treat it like a puzzle. I'm gonna move the straw around, but you just wanna get as close as possible without overlapping. You do the same thing. With a little cookie cutter. And go in there around it. Wow. And then when you wanna kind of like fade it out, I'm gonna use some foil and then just kind of detail around it to kind of flatten some of the edges. 
We're gonna move these scales and have you okay. start um, airbrushing. It'll Timbo, be very, listen, it'll my be very airbrushing easy. skills are not like your airbrushing skills. They're not, no, you're airbrushing the scale, so it'll be very simple. This is another first, because I don't think I've ever airbrushed on this channel before. And I am more of a beginner level. Okay, it's very easy, are you ready? Okay, this is easy for you. Yeah, <laughs> no, okay. it's easy, for, so like you can even play with it on the paper towel first. Tap, tap, tap. And just kind of around the edges. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna try this. Yep, perfect. Oh, gotcha, okay, okay, I can do that. And I'm gonna keep adding detail over here. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Why don't I do this more? Okay, so now I'm working on the eyes. I want them to be as even as possible on both sides. Quickly sketch first. And once I'm happy with it, I'll just dig it out so I can pop the eyeball in. That's why it helps to use really thick fondant. Just gonna give some wrinkles outside of the eye. And I do that before popping the eye in because then I can like open up the eye socket more and then the wrinkles look a little more natural. Okay, now we're going to go back to scales. <laughs> we're almost done. Larger scales here in the middle area of the face. I'm gonna go in with the standard straw to make some smaller ones. I just love that decorating this cake and you can get so much detail with everyday items that you have at your house. I love toothpicks, straws, and foil. Those are my three go-tos. So while Timbo's doing that, I'm gonna be cutting out some spikes for the back. Here we just sketch some very simple templates and we're just gonna lay them over some fondant that we've rolled out. And the spikes on Godzilla's back are pretty robust, so we've rolled out the fondant to be a little thicker. So I'm just gonna use an X-Acto knife. Be careful, don't get your fingers. And cut them out. And again, they don't need to be perfect because all of his spikes are a little bit different anyways. This is kind of what they look like and I'm just gonna be cutting out a bunch of these. I feel like we've been hanging out all day making this cake and it's been so fun. But now you've laid out plastic. Yes. Like we're painting. This is like the painting plastic. So what are we doing? Okay, this is the fun part. This is my favorite part. We're gonna add color now. Ooh. So you're gonna throw your gloves on. Okay, this feels serious now. Do you put it on, <laughs> look how big this is on me. I have like a little kid hand. Because we're only using one finger. We and it makes it easier. This is a very messy, process. Okay, so, take my toothbrush, uh -huh. dip it in a little bit of the color, and it- Take some of it off. Like that. Yep. That would do, did that do something? Oh, it worked. This is fun, okay. Now we're gonna move on to the airbrushing. <gasps> Ooh, okay, I'm gonna watch you do your thing. This is what I live for, everyone. I just wanna watch Timbo airbrush all day, <laughs> so you don't understand what a treat this is. just finished a bunch of airbrushing and I can't believe that you only use one color because it has so much dimension. Did you really only use one color? Well, yeah, it's perfect because like we started with that light gray, so using the dark color or the black to mm -hmm. airbrush and just get the highlights, then you end up with two different colors. But we're not done yet. Not yet. Eee, I'm so excited. So we're gonna be adding some more decoration pieces and I actually helped make these, so I'm very proud. And I hope <laughs> I hope they look really good on our Godzilla. We're gonna be adding all the little scales. Yep, so now we have our lighter scales that we'll add to like the darker back area mm -hmm. so that they pop more. So we're just gonna add a little water. To get fondant to stick to fondant, you just use a paintbrush and a little bit of water. And as soon as it gets a little wet, it will attach really nicely. We've got all the scales on there. It looks uh -huh. really cool. And Timba's ready to paint again. He's gonna add a little bit more dimension. What are you gonna do now? Just gonna add a little more shadow towards the bottom scales, just so it gives it more depth so it looks like it's coming out of deep water. Look at all this detail. I mean, <laughs> this looks so real. This 
this is incredible, but Timbo, mm -hmm. I mean, look in the mouth. Poor Godzilla needs, like, I know. needs dentures. There's no teeth in there. So what are we gonna do to make some teeth? Fill the entire mouth with white fondant. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of sculpting and detailing just so, like, so that it looks like the inside of the mouth. Detail the roof of the mouth a little bit and then do some airbrushing and hand painting. So I'll do that all at once and it'll just bring it together. I'll get the fondant. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go get it right now. This cake is looking incredible. The layering of the colors, it just looks so good. And you used your favorite. Confectioner's glaze. Confectioner glaze. Everything. Right, it was the feedback to almost every contestant. What about that <laughs> confection glaze? That's but we're not done yet though. Okay, okay. We're not done yet, we still have one more step. If you have an open mouth like this, you have to have slobber. If you own a dog, this is true. <laughs> this is facts. But then we need water at the base too, or else mm -hmm. he's just popping out of a board and you don't want that. So we're gonna use ice them all. Oh, cool. Okay, so I've never done this on my channel. I have played with ice and malt, but I haven't done it on the channel. So could you explain to someone who's maybe never worked with ice and malt, what can we do with it? I'm not an ice and malt master yet. This is just melted sugar, but it's already, it's pre-made. So we're just gonna melt these down in the microwave, melt it down until it starts to bubble. Mm -hmm. So normally I just do like 30 second intervals and then pop it out. Got stir it. it up a little bit. So we're gonna use a heat safe Pyrex glass dish over here. We put a piece of tape all the way around the edge to kind of give it a lip to hold in the melted isomalt. So we'll pour it in and decorate the base. Boom, with isomalt. <laughs> Whenever you're working with hot candy off the stove or out of the microwave, just be really careful because it's really hot and it stays hot. Okay, so I'm gonna let this cool for just a bit. Because it's a little liquidy. Okay, I think this is good now. Okay, so what do we do? We're just gonna start pouring. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we're just pouring around the base. And remember, mm -hmm. there's tape around the edge of the cake board, so it's making a lip, so it's gonna hold it in. This may be my favorite cake I've ever got to make with somebody. I feel like a little kid, I was like, I cut scales. So I wanna make ripples in the isomalt, mm -hmm. but I can't do it while it's super hot. So I have to wait for it to cool just a bit, but not all the way. So right now, it looks like we've given it en enough time to cool down. So I'm just gonna use a flat end of my Dresden tool. I'm just gonna push down to create small ripples like this. It's 6 a.m. and this is what you're getting. Oh my gosh, hey! <laughs> hey, Donald, guess what? Guess who's here? It's Timbo! Donald, I had to show you this cake that we're making. Check out these teeth, how real they look. Okay, it's an egg for creativity. Mm -hmm. um, Donna, we'll let you go. We're gonna go finish this video, but we missed you. It was so nice okay, to see thank you. you. So much for calling me at 6 a.m. <laughs> no, thank you for letting me see you like this. I really appreciate it, man. <laughs> this water looks real. This is amazing. Now it's still warm, but we can pull off the tape, I think. Yeah, the edges are pretty cool, so I think we can pull the tape off now. Ta -da! This is so sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna take some clear isomalt and I just wanna kind of just let it drip. And you're making a little zigzag motion. Uh-huh. That's some good looking drool. <laughs> it's so cool. So Timbo, you have made this look more and more real, even to the drool. So is there any more steps? But yes, we're not done yet, we have one more step. Now, because he's coming out of water, he has to look wet, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to cover him in our own little glaze mix, which is just 50-50 vodka and corn syrup. While I love confectioner glaze, it is a little pricey. So you don't want to decorate a full cake with it. We're almost done over here, so you have to let me know in the comments down below. Kong versus Godzilla. Are you Team Kong or Team Godzilla? This is hard because I love animals. And even though these are mythical animals, animals, <laughs> even though these are mythical animals, I have a hard time because I just, they're two big, beautiful, like monster-like creatures and I just, like dragons, I want them both to win. Listen, Kong has not 
put in the time yet. Okay, that's true. Godzilla's been around way longer. Here you can start to see the difference. The side that we've glazed and looks shiny and the side that is more matte. And ta-da! Ta <laughs> Here's the Godzilla cake that we made today. A huge thank you to my friend Timbo. He was so talented. This, this could not have happened. He is such a talented artist. He is amazing. Thank you for being here. Listen, wow. thank you for assisting me. I've never had someone of your caliber assist <laughs> me on a cake. So. I will gladly be your sous chef any day. This is a dangerous combo right here. Timbo is amazing. The cakes that he makes are just incredible. So if you haven't already, go check him out, show him some love. I'm gonna be putting all of his links down below. In general, Timbo has been on so many shows, but right now our show is out. He's a judge, part of the Cake Council on Baketopia, which is now on HBO Max. You can check it out there. What? There's little <laughs> lights inside, blue lights, just a little bit so that when we do pictures, you'll get that glow off the teeth. Uh -huh. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be posting a bunch of pictures all over the social medias. And if you guys want to make any Godzilla themed treats, please do take a picture and use the hashtag nerdy nummies so that we can find it and we can heart it and favorite it and like it. Cause I love seeing your baking creations. It just makes me happy. It makes my day. And if you like watching, watching these baking videos and watching some nerdy nummies. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Whoa, every time I post a new, I have to say <laughs> that three times fast. I feel like they should know Yeah. Right now. <laughs> ring the bell, because we're going to be making a bunch of really cool baking videos this year, including Timbo and I are making another one. Don't tell them yet. Okay, I'm not going to give you any spoilers. For now. Yeah, but make sure you have have your um, bell on because we're making some really cool videos this year. Ah! All right, that does it for the video. Again, thanks for watching, you guys. Bye-bye.